Okay, this is kind of a two-part question, maybe a four-part question. Um, how to phrase or look at images or words, how to better translate what you see and hear, looking and meanings. Um, so, how to see something. You know, in the beginning, if you've come to a workshop or you've come to what, uh, when I'm out speaking, you know, we play a telepathic game. And in that telepathic game, a lot of times, um, you start to see shapes. Maybe you don't get the exact thing in the telepathic game, but you start to see shapes. And one of the most important things about that is that you're starting to get information. I mean, you're getting information anyway, but you're starting to recognize that you get information. And so, you, you can do a couple things. One, you can just write down, well, it was a triangle. And then eventually you can keep asking, well, what is it, what is it, what is it, and maybe it'll be a TP. But another thing that could happen is you could just let it be a triangle, and you could say to the person, I'm seeing a triangle-shaped thing. I don't know what it is. And then the person can fill you in. And sometimes when you're feeling really confident and you don't mind asking, that might be the better thing to do because that way you're not sitting there second-guessing, you're not sweating over it. It's not the test in the third grade over, you know, algebra, which you're not supposed to do until it's seventh grade. So um, that's, you know, we, we put a lot on ourselves, and there's no problem with asking the person that you're talking to their animal what it is that you're looking at, because we can't always know what that shape is, and that's, that's in terms of shapes. And where it's really important to be willing to ask is when it comes to lost animals, because we aren't going to know. I don't know what the landscape looks like in Ontario. I don't know what the landscape looks like in, you know, I mean there's a lot of places where I don't know the landscape and yet if I'm really communicating with the animal and I'm getting some really clear pictures, I've got to be able to translate that quickly. So then that brings us to the second part, which is how better to translate. So sometimes with images we're not going to be able to translate. And then, you know, again, the other day, I did a phone session with a woman who was about to put her horse down, and um, they, the horse had said something at the very beginning about a basket. Well, I didn't know what the basket meant, and so at the end, uh, the woman asked me, is there anything else that you, uh, that my horse has to say? And I said, you know, I, I don't know what this means, but he mentioned something about a basket. And she said, oh, I was going to get a basket of fruits or, you know, wonderful things for the barn owner because she's been so helpful. And then I got immediately, oh, he wants a picture of you and him in the basket. So there's no harm in asking when we get these random things because I couldn't have known what the basket was. I got tons of other information that was very helpful for the woman, remembering things in their past remembering what his personality was like, like, but I couldn't have, um, I couldn't have come up, you know, I didn't know that she was going to get a basket for the barn owner. Uh, so those are the sorts of things that, you know, when you start to get these things that stand out, there's no problem asking the person. That being said, all the things that you're getting now usually are things that you can talk about and usually are things that are easy to tell a person. And the more things you continue to get, I mean, I know that I'm a pain in the butt about this, but the truth is it all comes down to practice. The more you do it, the better you get. The better you get, the more you do it. And that's, that's really, there's no substitute for just jumping in there. There's no, we can intellectualize it all we want, but at the end of the day, we've just got to jump in and do it.